Hi, I'm OZ Hall. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. You may have noticed that I'm rather obsessed with the ARP 2500 modular synthesizer. See a link above to my ARP 2500 Bible video playlist. My first synth was a 1975 ARP Odyssey. I also logged hundreds of hours on an ARP 2600 in the 1970s. For me, the ARP 2500 was the big one that got away. All I could afford was the owner's manual and the brochures, which I still own. When Behringer released the 2500 series of modules in Eurorack format, I was ecstatic. At long last, I would be able to own a 2500 modular system. This series of videos is focused on a group of modules being offered by AmSynthUK.com. See a link in the description. Please note that I'm not affiliated with AmSense. AmSense is a company owned and operated by the very talented engineer Rob Keeble. Rob is an electrical engineer from the UK. He has researched and cloned a number of modules from both the 1970s Moog and ARP modular systems. He has also reproduced selected Eurorack modules based on 70s and 80s Japanese synth designs. When Behringer decided to build the ARP 2500 series of modules in Eurorack format, they selected Rob as the subject matter expert, the SME. Since Rob had cloned a number of the ARP 2500 modules, he was an obvious choice. That work has been finished for a couple of years now. In early 2024, Rob released a roadmap for a number of modules which were not included in the Behringer series. Check out the link above for a video outlining this list of modules. Several of these modules have been released as of August 2024. Previously, I created a video on the AM1047K module. This module adds percussion or pinging functionality to the Behringer 1047 multi-mode filter. This functionality was present in the ARP version of the 1047, but missing in the Behringer version. That video is still on the AmSense product page for the AM1047K as of August 18, 2024. Since AmSense have just released their own video for the AM1047K, I suspect they will place that video on their product page soon. See a link above to my AM1047K video if you're interested. This video will cover the first module, the AM1004P expander for the Behringer 1004 VCO. First, here's a little background on the ARP 2500 VCO offerings. There are four VCO modules, the 1004T, the 1004P, and the 1023 dual VCO module. Finally, the 1045 voice module also included a VCA, a VCF, and envelopes in a single module. The 1004T used five toggle switches to enable individual waveforms at the output. The toggles could be either normal or inverted polarity. If multiple waveforms were enabled, they would be summed. This is the version offered by Behringer. The toggle switches are a fairly rare feature on a VCO. The 1004P used five potentiometers to enable individual waveforms at the output. This allowed a mix of different waveforms, but none of them were inverted. The 1023 dual VCO used a rotary switch for each VCO to select a single waveform. There were fewer modulation controls so that two VCOs could be included on a single module. The 1025 voice module also has limited controls on the VCO and a rotary switch for waveform selection. 
As you can see, the main difference between the 1004T and the 1004P was the toggle switch versus the potentiometers for selecting what waveforms were presented at the output. The AM1004P is designed as an expander for the Behringer 1004 oscillator. It offers breakout sockets for the five waveforms, sine, triangle, saw, square, and pulse. It also provides a mix of those five waveforms at two identical mix output sockets. There's a very good introduction to this module by AmSynths. Check out the link above. Connecting the AM1004P module to the Behringer 1004 VCO is not difficult. There is a bit of soldering required to install a daughterboard onto the Behringer 1004 VCO. It is only 10 solder points. See a link in the description to AmSynth's excellent step-by-step -step build document to see what's involved. Let me highlight one quote from that document. We recommend heating the solder on the switch first as Behringer uses a high temperature lead-free solder. I used a soldering iron temperature of around 400 degrees Fahrenheit. The two basic features of the AM1004P are the mixer, which provides a mix of waveforms to the dual output jacks. This allows the creation of more complex waveforms. Note that there is a master volume for the mix. The breakout jacks provide access to multiple individual waveforms. Note that when you connect a cable to one of the breakout jacks, the waveform is removed from the mix. This functionality may sound simple, and it is. This is a utility module that opens the door to important capabilities within the context of a 2500 modular system. Let's look at a few use cases for these features. Use case number one. You could use the individual outs to route different waveforms into the 1050 mix sequencer inputs to alternate waveforms in the 1050 output. We've got this output routed into the 1006 filt amp and we've got the output of the filt amp going into this multiple so it goes to two places. Number one it goes to the main output and number two it goes to the input of this Swiss Daisy DSP which I'm using as a digital delay. The only other thing to mention is that we are taking a step gate out and using that to advance the step on the 1050 every eight steps on the 1027 sequencer. So let's just listen to that. That's triangle, square, sawtooth, and pulse with pulse with mod coming from this LFO. And that's use case number one. Use case number two takes advantage of the fact that we've got not only the individual outputs, but also the original output that's under the control of these toggle switches. So we're taking a sawtooth out of that main output, routing it into a 1005 mod amp that we're just using as a VCA. And we're using this envelope here to control the VCA and we're taking the output from the mod amp, routing it into a 1047 multimode filter. We've got the notch output acting as a phase shifter and to get that effect we've got to have the resonance at zero and we've got to add a little motion with an LFO going to control the center frequency. So let's listen to that in isolation. It's a 
a nice delicate effect and now let's bring in the original sound that we started with use case one. And add some digital delay. So we're starting to build up a good deal of texture with this sequence and that is use case number two. We want to shift our focus from the individual outputs to the mixed outputs. I want to point out that we've got in addition to the master volume we've got individual volumes and we're going to patch that output into the second input which is going to have a volume control here our VCA is open and let's bring up a sawtooth waveform so we can hear it. We'll cut off the resonance and open the filter and lower the volume a little bit. So we can we can start with a sine, triangle, square, sawtooth. Let's start with a sawtooth and we want to boost the fundamental. We can bring in a sine wave to increase the fundamental. Suppose we wanted to reduce the fundamental. Let's make one more patch point. We're going to patch this out into input number one. So let's start with a sine wave. And then we're going to add a sine wave from the original output. And there's no boost or cut in the center position. That's cutting it a bit and that's boosting it. Let's get that cut. We'll balance these two volumes until we've made it disappear by phase canceling these two waveforms. Now let's reduce that and cut this off. Start with a square wave. And now let's switch in the fundamental. In both cases, it's boosting. Let's see if we can adjust the cancellation. That just boosts it. It's much more difficult to do there if it's not the same wave, but what if we do a square wave? That boosts it and that cancels it. So finally we're going to start with the pulse and get a thin pulse with a lot of high harmonics and then let's see if we can cancel out the fundamental even more. And now we can do a resonant sweep. And we don't have any overload of the filter because that strong fundamental is not there. And that's use case number three. For use case number four, the first thing we're going to do is take this oscillator and put it in low frequency mode. The second thing we're going to do is not route the output through 
the filt amp, we're going to use this oscillator to go through the filt amp. We're going to take the output of the low frequency oscillator and use it as a gate. And then we're going to take the output of the sum of the waveforms, the combined waveform, and put that into an FM input on this oscillator so that we can get a two note sequence. We can add in a pulse wave to make it a more complex sequence. We can also use the ramp out and we can double the speed of it by adding in the square wave output. And that makes this ramp or sawtooth a, twice the frequency. We can also use triangle or sine. But let's go back to our little four note sequence. And then we add digital delay. We can also vary the pulse width. Let's get the delay back. And of course, increase the feedback and get a nice texture going. And that's use case number four, using the 1004 oscillator in low frequency mode and combining the waveforms for different interesting LFO waveforms. The AM1004P does what it does very well. This is a quality module, but don't expect the fire sale prices that you'll find currently on the Behringer 2500 series modules. What the module does offer is the opportunity to turn your 1004T VCO into a 1004P VCO with potentiometer mixing of waveforms. This provides the functionality of both basic versions of the original ARP 2500 VCO offerings. In my mind, this was as much a no-brainer of a purchase as the 1047 keyboard percussion module was for the 1047 multimode filter from Behringer. Both companion modules add significant functionality to the Behringer 2500 modules and bring their capabilities up to the original ARP 2500 modules. So that concludes this review on the AmSense AM1004P expander for the Behringer 1004 oscillator. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you.